Okay, so uh, my name is John Babaval. I work at Citrix on Zen Client Enterprise. I'm the maintainer of the device model for Zen Client Enterprise. And lately I've been doing a bunch of graphics virtualization work. Um, and I'd like to talk about removing copies from the display path. Um, so I'm going to go through a little bit of basic stuff, uh, how bits get on the screen with Zen. Uh, some of the existing optimizations that are already in the path and uh, how we can use GEM to help. And there's not a lot of time in this session for these things, so some of the stuff is going to be just a little bit boiled down. So this is uh, a quick version of how graphics works in QEMU. So there's two sides. Uh, to the graphics stack in QEMU. There's the hardware and the UI. The hardware is device-specific emulations. So uh, this can be your Cirrus VGA or, um, or what have you. And the UI is device-independent, so you can have your SDL uh, rendering code or VNC. And it allows you to mix and match. And they're pretty well separated from each other. Uh, so basically what happens is um, you have a linear frame buffer in, uh, in your guest's VRAM. And there's a periodic timer that calls a uh, hardware update. And that goes through and it processes the guest pixel data into a display surface. And um, then the UI does a refresh. And it takes, uh, takes the updated regions, which hardware update calls DPUI update to tell the UI what portions of the screen have changed. And that puts the new bits on the screen. So this takes us to uh, somewhat of a worst case scenario here for how bits can end up on your screen. Uh, your guest has a frame buffer somewhere that it's been software rendering into. And it's going to write those to um, emulated VRAM. So those get copied over into your emulated VRAM and QEMU. And it's going to look at that scan line by scan line because it might not be in a format that's friendly to your UI. And it's going to copy those over scan line by scan line into your display surface. And the display surface is then passed to the UI through the DPUI update call. And it will then blit out onto your window. And then there may or may not be a bunch more copies after that, but hopefully you don't care because they're all done in hardware. Now, hopefully no one's ever running in the worst case scenario. Um, the most uh, typical optimization that already exists is to do a foreign page mapping so that you have shared VRAM between the guest frame buffer and QEMU's virtual VRAM. So that eliminates this first copy and you just have a shared buffer. Why didn't it go to the next slide? OK, so the next optimization that can happen is called shared buffer mode. Uh, inside QEMU, you have the display surface, which is passed from the hardware to the UI. If the buffer in that display surface is in a format that the UI knows how to display natively, there's no reason to copy the data out of the VRAM into the display surface. You can just put a pointer to the existing frame buffer into the display surface, and you're left with just one copy from the display surface into whatever your final destination is. Um, in order to optimize that process, because uh, you don't have emulated rights to VRAM, Zen provides dirty page uh, tracking. So when you do the hardware update, you can generate a list of calls to DPUI update with scan lines that uh, we have reason to believe the pixel data has changed on. Um, so you only have one copy, and hopefully it's not a full frame copy. It's only a subset of your screen. OK, we'll talk a little bit about graphics hardware next. Uh, this is the really short version. Um, a lot of systems have a unified memory architecture, and that means the GPU is connected to the same memory bus as the CPU, and it can scan directly out of RAM. And GPUs have their own virtual address space, which means they can scan any domain's memory if the GPU is programmed right. And it's the really short version, so that's how GPUs work. Um, so that leads us to the obvious solution. 
uh, is if we set up the GPU page table to map the linear frame buffer of the domain, you program the CRTC controller base address to point to the mapping in GPU address space, you have bits on your screen and there's no copies. And it's simple. Um, unfortunately, nothing's simple. Uh, GPUs are actually a lot more complicated than that, so you don't necessarily know how to manipulate the page tables of your G, uh, GPU. Vendor might not tell you how to do it. Uh, even if the vendor does tell you how to do it, uh, next week they come out with a new GPU and then it doesn't work anymore. So there have been lots of implementations of zero copy video in uh, virtualized environments, and generally they ship and then at some point they break and then they go away. Um, and then the other problem with it is that you probably want to use your GPU for more than one thing at a time. You probably want to have a windowing system running so you can show your VM frame buffer and you can show some other application or you can show multiple VMs or what have you. So in order to solve that problem, the idea is to use GEM. Um, the Linux kernel has drivers for a lot of GPUs. There's uh, a lot of great code that's been contributed open to, to open source to take advantage of. And the API is relatively standard, which means we can write this once and have minimal change when the next GPU comes out um, and we can rely on somebody else to update when a new GPU is available. Um, the trick about GEM is that it can give you some memory to write to your GPU with, but we don't just want any memory. We want to tell it specifically which memory to use. So when you have a gem object, uh, basically what you have is a bunch of GPU specific uh, information that you don't care about. It's behind the scenes. It's for uh, managing state inside the driver. And then you have a scatter gather list of the pages that make up the pixels in the object. Um, those pages are filled in with functions that are already hooked in gem. So it's uh, relatively easy to add a new get pages call and a new put pages call so that you can fill in the scatter gather list with the right pages and you theoretically don't care about the GPU specific state. So you fill in the right pages and you pass the object to KMS, the kernel sets the mode to point to that frame buffer and you're done. Um, but you need to know which pages and GEM needs to know which pages. So the question becomes, how do you get the right pages? And um, earlier, when we talked about an existing op uh, optimization at QEMU, uh, what QEMU does is does a foreign page mapping. And that gets a virtual address, a local virtual address, to the frame buffer. Um, unfortunately, it doesn't get us the machine addresses, and the GPU needs machine addresses. Uh, also, a Linux scatter gather list is filled in with page structs, so the memory needs to be known to the kernel's VM. And foreign pages are kind of magic. Uh, the hypervisor goes behind the scenes and it fills in the right entries in your page table so you can resolve a virtual address, but then when you go to ask Linux what the physical address is for that virtual address, uh, it has no idea and you get all sorts of crashing. Um, the grant mechanisms in Zen work around that. Um, so we could use grant tables. Um, some code in DOMU would allocate a big grant table. They would create a grant reference for each page in your linear frame buffer. Uh, you have some mechanism to transfer the grant references from the guest to DOM0. And then inside the grant code, there's something called the M to P override, which takes a, a struct page in the kernel, and it overrides the machine address of that page. So that when you go and look up the address, it you know, sees that it doesn't actually hit, and then it goes into this look, um, lookup table, gets you the machine address, you've overridden it. Um, and it works. But there's some caveats. Uh, you have to have a cooperative guest. And ideally, you want to be able to do this without having a, some sort of PV video driver in the guest. Um, it really inflates the size of your grant tables. And it sets up a bunch of virtual mappings to go with these addresses that nobody ever looks at. Um, when you look at the, uh, the pages in a gem object from user space, they get resolved through the graphics aperture instead of through the virtual addresses of the associated pages. So 
uh, the virtual addresses are never used. So we can sort of do a hybrid approach. Um, we can skip setting up a foreign page mapping and just translate the guest piffins um, using an existing hypercall translate gpiffin list. So you pass a list of the guest physical addresses of your linear frame buffer to Zen, and it happily um, increases the reference count all, in, all of them and hands you a list of addresses back. And you can then just use the M2P override section of the grant code to override some pages and you give the pages to Jem. So now you have no guest knowledge, no unnecessary mappings, but you do have page structures. And then you get a nice gem object representing your frame buffer. So in order to do this, uh, a new ioctal is added to gem. It's very simple because the get pages and put pages uh, functions are already hooked. So basically, it takes some additional parameters and it overrides get pages and put pages. It calls into Zen with the translate hypercall. It sets up the table and it fills in the scatter gather list. And it basically looks like this. You give it the guest frame number, you give it the size, you give it the domain ID, and it gives you a gem handle. So now, um, this is kind of a bit of a jumble, but now all of your buffers are the same pages. So nobody has to copy anything anywhere. Um, so now you have this gem object that represents your guest frame buffer. Uh, there's a few things you can do with it. Um, you can use KMS and you can turn it into a scan out buffer. Um, you get an entire VT in your DOM0 Linux. There's, there's no overhead whatsoever. So your, your screen is updating, CPU usage is zero, all the copies are being done in hardware. Um, you don't get the nice uh, guest events from X, so you need to find another source for your user input. Um, but that's not too tough. You can get them from dev event. Uh, that doesn't solve the using your display for multiple things problem, though. It's taking over your entire screen. So there's a couple other options uh, if you want to use this inside of X. So you can convert it to a prime object. Um, a prime object is a file descriptor. The idea is that you can take your gem object and you can share it uh, with multiple processes in user space and still have some reasonable uh, permissions. And when you, when you get this file handle, you can give it to the DRI2 or the DRI3, which doesn't really exist yet, but it will soon extension and X and, and do what you will with it. Um, or more interesting, you can convert it to an EGL named image and map it to a texture and then you can do all sorts of uh, hardware accelerated OpenGL things with it. Um, and you can even use this technique to display hardware accelerated frame buffers with ZenGT. So um, Hightow, I don't see here. We'll, we'll be demoing that later, so you should be, uh, be sure to go see his demo. Um, I chickened out on the demo. <laughs> Um, but the, co the code is on GitHub, so you can go check it out. And I have a spec and a document, which I will put somewhere and tell Lars so he can tell the rest of you, but I haven't put it online anywhere yet. And that's it. Any questions? Where did Lars go with the microphone? Did that go too fast? Yeah. Um, the, the translate hypercall, is that part of Zen now? I, it is know? part of Zen, although currently n there's no consumers of it that I'm aware of. I don't even think it's in there, is it? It was removed in 2009. Yeah, that was pretty ancient. It's, it's gone. So the Zen side of it's still in, but the Linux side of it isn't. No, I'm pretty sure the Zen side of it's gone as well. Where's Ben? Ben, what version of Zen are we using? 4.3. Okay. I have to look and see if it's in a patch that I've applied to Zen, but I was pretty it's sure that... I have a patch too that I applied to Zen that does exactly the same thing. Okay. Um, if it's not in Zen, in order to do this, you'll need to put it back. <laughs> um, the Zen client 
Zen tree has a list of patches that get applied to it, and I wouldn't be surprised if it came out of that list of patches and I just didn't realize it. So there's another way around of doing this, which uh, is the one I, which we implemented, which is certainly simpler, I think, um, which is where you allocate the memory in the host, or in the you know, domain zero in this mm -hmm. case, but then actually map it into the guest as the frame buffer pages. So then you don't have to worry about any of the following foreign mappings or translation on the, uh, you know, effectively the domain zero or host side. And that actually you know, certainly simplifies things from that point of view. And right, so you can definitely do it both ways, that, but that, doing it that way adds a different problem, which is then you've allocated a gem object that's backed by machine pages and you need some way of asking gem what pages those are so you can give them to the guest. So either way you end up playing a little bit of a mapping trick. Um, but yeah, you can certainly do it in either direction. Okay, do you have any more questions? Okay. Did you do any performance measurement? I mean, this will be quite much faster. So. Yeah, so when you're running using KMS, um, there's really nothing to measure. There's literally nothing happening on the CPU while you're displaying, um, at least in DOM0. So from that perspective, the performance is very good. And then if you're using one of the other mechanisms, it depends a little bit on your GPU because you're relying on your GPU to do the rendering. Um, it's performance-wise very similar to what um, Zen Client XT does with Surfman. Uh, so if you want a performance comparison, that would be a good thing to compare it to. The key difference is that you don't have to maintain a proprietary GPU driver. You are using the code in Linux. So I mean, like I said, zero copy video is nothing new, but zero copy video without doing a lot of code maintenance is the idea here. More questions? Thanks very much, John.